Plate tectonics is an endogenous process. This means that plate tectonics is caused by the heat that is created inside the earth. This is in contrast to exogenous processes such as weathering and erosion, which are caused by the heat of the sun. Due mainly to radioactive decay, the temperature in the interior of the earth rises to around 6000 degrees Celsius. This is just as warm as the surface of the sun. To understand how this heat leads to plate tectonics, we must first look at the structure of the earth. Let's start with the inner part of the earth. This is called the core and consists mainly of metals. The inner core is solid, while the outer core is liquid. Although the temperature in the inner core is higher than in the outer core, the pressure is also a lot higher. So that the inner core is solid and the outer core a fluid. The core heats the next layer. This is the mantle and, unlike the core, it does not consist of metals but of rock. The rock is heated at the core. The heat is transferred to the crust. It is often mistakenly thought that the rock in the mantle is liquid. Because here, just as with the inner core, the pressure is enormous, the rock does not become fluid. Because it is very hard, it is best to imagine a metal as a kind of chewing gum that can still move a bit. Especially in the direction of the crust, the rock in the mantle can move more easily. Because the mantle can move here, this is also called the asthenosphere. Asthenos means weak. This part of the mantle is the only part that can move, which means that it is weaker than the rest of the mantle. The rock is heated up, so it expands and becomes lighter and starts to rise. Just below the crust it can cool down and shrink, which makes it heavier, and sinks again. These are called convection currents, and they can move a few centimeters a year. Finally, we come to the crust. This is the solid part of the earth. The crust and the upper part of the mantle is called the lithosphere. The mantle is solidified on the outside of the earth. And therefore the crust largely consists of igneous rock. The crust is very thin compared to the whole earth. There are two types of crust. Oceanic crust and continental crust. Oceanic crust lies under the ocean and is 8 to 10 kilometers thick. Oceanic crust mainly consists of the heavier basalt. The continental crust consists of a less heavy igneous rock, mainly granite. The continental crust can become much thicker than the oceanic crust. The crust floats, as it were, on the deformable asthenosphere. Just like an ice cube. The larger the ice cube, the more ice there is also underwater. And the same applies to the crust. The higher the Earth's crust, the larger the part of the crust that's in the asthenosphere. As a result, the continental crust can up to be 80 km thick on the mountain range. Parts of a continent where old rocks lie on the surface are called shields. This is often a somewhat flat area. Quite a lot is known about the inside of the earth without anyone ever being there. That we already know so much is due to earthquakes. After an earthquake, different waves are released that move through the earth in a different manner. At the transition between the different parts, such as from the mantle to the core, such a shock wave gets a deviation. Compare this with the deviation of the light when you put your hand in the water, that can sometimes give a distorted picture. By comparing the arrival of the different waves in different places in the world, it is possible to calculate the approximate boundary between mantle and core. Because the waves move differently in different material, it is also possible to reason from which material the shell and core must consist. In this way we learn more and more about the structure of the earth. So you know now how the earth is built up inside what properties the different crusts have and how we came to this knowledge. In the following videos you will learn more about the movement of the plates.